It took a lot of years of hard work, saving my money, not spending it on Lamborghinis, 5 a.m. mornings, never taking naps, zero unnecessary trips to Disneyland, no days off, not investing in crypto. What I'm saying is, guys, is the determination and the dedication is real. And because of that, we're finally able to do it. I bought a crashed Bugatti. I'm gonna tell you all about it right after a word from our sponsor. Today's episode is proudly sponsored by Simply Safe, and we are in a new shop, which means I need to install a new Simply Safe system. Let me show you what I got. This is some of the stuff we're gonna install real quick. We got the base station, an indoor security camera, keypad. I have a bunch of entry sensors for all the doors. I have a few motion sensors, a few glass break sensors, and a bunch of cameras. Let's go ahead and get this installed. This is all installation you can do at home with no tools, and it's pretty quick. I'm gonna time myself. All right guys, that took me 20 minutes, but I did install four cameras and one, two, three, four, five door sensors. So that's, that's a big installation. It's a big shop. Let me show you around. So we've got door sensors on every door. We've got glass break sensors near all the glass. We've got motion sensors. We got our front door indoor camera. We've got our base station. We've got our keypad. And we've got a bunch of our outdoor wireless HD cameras. So the setup process is clearly very easy. Anybody can do it at home. I mean, my backstory is you guys remember, probably saw the episode when I got all my cars jacked. I got my wheels and tires, came home to my cars up on blocks. Right after that, I got Simply Safe, and knock on wood, nothing bad's ever happened since. But for me, more than anything, it's the peace of mind that Simply Safe gives me. I have it on my home, I have it at the other shop, I have it at this shop now. It makes me feel comfortable and good in the areas when I am there and when I'm not there. Another thing that I love is how simple they make this system work. So I just hit the home button. That's emulating like if I'm home and I'm going to bed. I'm gonna see the, the base station glowing blue here so I know that it's active. If I'm leaving for the night or the day, I just hit this away button right here. It gives me 60 seconds to get out of the place and then the alarm system goes hot and I know my house is secure or my shop. And you could also do all that stuff from the app. And now that I have all these cameras set up, my app is looking pretty cool. So you can see I got all my cameras from the front door to the parking lot to the inside of the shop monitoring everything. And then from inside the app or from inside the website, you can go ahead and change your alarm status from off, home, or away. And you guys can save 20% off your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for the interactive monitoring plan and you get your first month free. That's all at simplysafe.com slash B is for build. It's at the top of the description. It's on the screen right here. Simplysafe.com slash B is for build to learn more. Huge thanks to them for sponsoring this episode. Let's get down to it. Thank you so much for watching that word from our sponsor. Before we take the cover off of this bad boy and show you around our crash Bugatti, I wanna tell you how we got it. A Little bit of story time. Way back in 2014, when the world was a fair and decent place, there was a movie being made that would be one of the most iconic movies made that year. The movie is based off the video game Need for Speed. The movie is called Need for Speed, starring Kid Cudi featuring Aaron Paul. And if you look at the movie poster, hiding out there in the corner is my Bugatti. That's right, there was a plethora of supercars and hypercars purchased for this movie, for the filming. My Bugatti was a hero Bugatti. It was part of the race until some jerk cop put a brick on the accelerator pedal of his cop car and then crashed into my car. My Bugatti spun me around. Then the Bugatti was done being used in the film, never featured again in the film, sold off to a wonderful man out in Atlanta and then sold to me. And that there's the story of how I got my Bugatti. Story time over, time to take off the covers and show you around. So it, it played a Bugatti in the in the movie, but it was a it was a replica uh, Bugatti because they don't crash million dollar cars just to get a two second scene in a movie. Thankfully, so the backstory behind how they made these replicas for the movie is, is quite interesting. They actually got permission from Bugatti to build replicas of their cars, and Bugatti sent them the 3D 
files of the exact dimensions of everything in the body and all the parts for their for their cars, I bet similar to what they might do for video games and stuff like that. And the company that was producing the movie and building these, uh, they actually had the bodies made out of, the replica bodies made out of fiberglass by some place in LA. And then the bodies were placed on what you see here, uh, used for the movie, and then they were destroyed because obviously Bugatti wouldn't want to, you know, do a partnership with you and then have you go sell a replica of their car and make a bunch of money on it. So the bodies were destroyed. Some of the pieces are still left over. Let me show you. Not, it's not a lot. So for starters, I mean, it's it's labeled pretty clearly. Like, I mean, I know what I got, right? They got a replica Koenigsegg steering wheel. I believe this is off the Koenigsegg cars that were used in the movie. They just threw that on here. And then you have the replica uh, Bugatti dash. So this is all still here. You can see the little like fake clock has the uh, has the Bugatti logo right there, um, and then that little EB icon. I'm not really even sure what that is for the the fake stereo. All this is just fiberglass, and uh, it'll all be gone by the end of this episode. Because man, do I not want to get sued by another movie company <laughs> or Bugatti? Please don't sue me. Both you guys, please don't sue me. I'm a nice guy. Anyways, I do believe that is the end of the, the Bugatti-ness, other than you could kind of tell by the, by the skeleton on this thing that it was built, the outer part of the, the cage was built to hold the Bugatti replica body. This car is interesting. It's actually made by a company called Race Car Replicas. Um, that is a sister company of SLC, Super Light Cars. Those guys are the guys that make the adapters that we run on our LS to Graziano transmission in the Jumpicon uh, right there and in the Bertcon, which is over here. This is being worked on for our next track day. Um, those guys uh, basically pioneered mating uh, Lamborghini transmissions, transaxles to uh, LS engines and lots of other engines. So speaking of, let me show you the power plant for this thing. It's another very popular combination, which is the LS engine that's an LS3. This has got about 30 minutes of use on it apparently. Um, and then you can see their adapter plate in there, which goes to the Porsche transaxle. Oscar's right here and he was doubting whether or not it was used in the movie. I'll show you, I'll show you why I know it was used in the movie. It's actually interesting. Normally you never really know. There's apparently two Bugattis since mine is number two, obviously. I know there was only two used on set. I was told by the people that own this car that it was used on set, but I mean, how are you gonna be sure, right? Well, you can be sure because this is the one that was crashed in the movie. And so if it was crashed, right, where's the crash damage? Well, okay, here's the scene. Bang, spin around. Okay, in my cantilever suspension joint right here, I've got a bolt that has come out. That's some damage that obviously could have came from just a lack of Loctite, right? Um, but also, you can see the scarring on this wheel where it was hit. It was hit right here. Um, there's also some stuff on this lip right here. Uh, that is the signs right here that this was hit by a Dodge Charger. And it made it do a nice little spin. Also, the Hero cars do not come with the hydraulic e-brake. That's meant for stunting. So this was like, this was a Hero, well, I don't know. It was. I'm not sure if it was a Hero car or if it was the stunt car. Doesn't really matter because it's not applicable to anything we're doing with it, so. But it did see screen time, which is kind of cool, but really doesn't matter at this point. I realize we've done all this talking about this thing and you're probably wondering like, you know, why did you, why did you buy this thing? What's the plan? So I bought this because SLC or, or RCR, whichever company you want to talk about, they're basically one and the same. They build an amazingly good chassis. I mean, these cars, they make amazingly good track day cars and all sorts of stuff. It is a really rigid aluminum chassis that they throw an LS in the back of. And it's like a, it's like a really cool engineered bare bones uh, race car, SLC, super light cars. I mean, they're, it's very lightweight, they're powered by an LS. They put a pretty cool body on it. They slap these things around and then they just go zooming around tracks and stuff. I don't know there's an SLC owners group on Facebook that I'm a part of and it looks like they really enjoy their cars. And I got like a banging deal on this thing. It was an amazing, amazing deal. And I, I was like, okay, well, um, I'm gonna buy it and then I'm gonna figure out what I wanna build out of it later. And now, now is later actually. So I've hinted towards this already uh, and some of you've probably already figured it out, but there's one build that has eluded us. It has escaped us. It was also a movie car. This is a movie car. Um, it was a 1967 Mustang Fastback and we got into some serious legal trouble and, and we lost the build consequently. And although that movie car style, exact styling of that car uh, is no longer really that desirable to me. I'm not just wishing I had that e-car sitting in my driveway because it would only remind me of the absolutely miserable time I had dealing with that company and those people and just ugh, lots of bad memories. 
The 67 Mustang Fastback is a car that I, I really, really, really love. The Carroll Shelby Design GT500 Edition, you know, the Shelby GT500 67 Fastback is a car that I absolutely adore. And I felt like that build just kind of slipped through my fingers because I styled it wrong. And uh, now I wanna, I'm gonna build another one. I'm going to build another one and I'm gonna have a 67 Fastback in my, in my stable, in my collection, so I can look at the beauty of it. I think just body lines alone, it's one of the prettiest cars in the world. Now ours is gonna be different because we're gonna be building it on top of this SLC chassis. Um, so it's gonna be mid-engined. It's gonna be powered by a Chevy power plant instead of a Ford power plant, which is honestly, I'm not super stoked on that whole thing. I'd rather it be a Ford and a Ford car, but we're using what we got. We're kind of running what we brung here. I'm not going to engine swap a car that I just bought to build another car. That's, that's just too much, guys. Let me get behind the camera and show you some cool features of this that are gonna kind of come over into our Mustang. One is how low to the ground this thing sits. So it's gonna influence the design of our Mustang quite a lot, because Mustangs actually sit typically quite high off the ground, and this car sits quite, quite low. So we have to build almost what would look like kind of a slammed Mustang. The SLC chassis come with cantilevered suspension, which is super, super cool, and it means that we don't have a big tower sticking out of here. Uh, although that probably doesn't change our design aesthetic much, it's gonna make it very, very much easier for us to build that Mustang body onto here. And they probably do that because they're constantly putting movie car bodies onto these things. So it's a nice little package that's tucked right up in here. We have this center exit exhaust, which I absolutely love. And I've got a design that I'm working on that utilizes this center exit exhaust. Just imagine if well, right now it's centered down, but imagine if it was like center, center out. Center, center right out the back. So the Mustang has a really, really good spot to put that and I'm really, really stoked on that idea and that concept too. These wheels are actually really cool. They are a three piece wheel. So you can see that we have the center piece right here and then the lip and the barrel right here and here. So I can actually change the offset of these wheels by uh, getting new lips or barrels and that'll change the offset of the wheel. Uh, very cool uh, dual caliper setup for stunting. The hydro e-brake goes to its own caliper, which is really cool. This thing runs on just the Chevy GM um, ECU, which is right down here. It's all really, really simply wired. And it actually it actually runs quite nicely. Oscar, you wanna fire it up for the people? Yeah, it, it's not easy to get in and out of, and we're not gonna make it any easier to get in and out of. So it actually has a key under there, and then you turn the key, and it primes the motors. It just starts right up. So I bought a running and driving functional mid-engine a uh, vehicle that actually is sports oriented. And this has all the same sporty stuff that they use on the RCR vehicles, I believe, as far as like the control arms and the suspension and stuff. And they built really, really fast track cars. So I do feel like this is gonna be a great performance vehicle. The build for this is gonna be A, cause I want a 67 Mustang Fastback. So that'll be like kind of just looks wise, it'll look great and it'd be a beautiful car to own. But B, I'd love to do stuff like autocross with this car. Um, drag racing is, is would be fun but it's not gonna be like some insanely fast, you know, six second car or anything like that. But things like autocross, maybe circuit driving and, and just an all around really fun car to have is the goal for this vehicle. And this car does have an LS in it. So it means we can bring it to Holly LS Fest. Holly LS Fest West is in less than a month. So we're gonna try and build it out so it'll have a body and it'll be the right length. And I don't know if we're gonna get through all of the paint in the interior before LS Fest, but we're gonna build as much as we can and then we're gonna take this thing out to LS Fest for you guys to see. We're gonna be at the, uh, let me, uh, now, now that I got all the banners up, we're gonna be at the eBay Motors booth at Holly LS Fest West. Uh, the dates are right here on the screen and, uh, and this thing will be here in whatever state that we get it, but I'm gonna treat this just like any other build that we have to do fast and build it fast. Really all we have to do is attach a body, build an interior and go enjoy it. What could go wrong? All right, guys, enough talking. The guys are desperate to get down to work. Let's take, we're gonna take all of the body holding metal tubing off of this thing, dashboard off. Let's just take a bunch of stuff off, see where we land.
Oscar, please step out of my Bugatti frame. Replica, bu replica Bugatti frame. All right, so we've done, we put this thing on a diet on the front end, cut that, all this stuff off. We're leaving bars that we think, hey, these might be, these might be helpful in the future. So we got these straight out bars. We had some of these like this on our last Mustang build, really helped us build off of. Um, and then this guy, questionable. And if we keep any of this, it'll obviously be fully cleaned up. We'll wire wheel it down to bare metal, primer and paint over it. Um, these aren't gonna last long. We just started, started like right about here and then worked our way to the front. Now let's take the last Bugatti replica piece off of this vehicle. This this dash can go. You guys want to give me a hand? Interesting. Oscar found a halfway mark. So I guess we'll take that pad off. Take take the half of it off. Maybe you have to push it forward, push the whole wheel forward and then it comes off. Ah, all right. So I wonder what type of wheel is in the guts of this thing. Very interesting, that's heavy, that's a heavy wheel. All right, let's rip this dash in half. Oh, you halved it. That's fine. All right. Consider it halved. That is the only piece and will forever be the only piece in the shop that says Bugatti on it. All right, let's see what we got under here electrical power steering assist that we didn't know was a thing and never turned on. I like this. Is this one of the expensive ones? Will somebody Google this real quick? Let's see how much this costs? Cause I, I know there are some of these that are like spendy. So we'll definitely oh, want to- Oh, here's all our switches. There's switches? Yeah, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> There's gotta be a bunch of Wait, what does this say? Chassis. Oh my gosh, look, it is a Bugatti. It says it right there, guys. Bugatti number two. Does it say purpose T-bone by police? <laughs> Whatever we do with this build, that stays right there. <laughs> we have to work around that. I freaking love that, dude. If not, we put it on the wall. I love this chassis. Chassis 105J, car Bugatti number two, B2, purpose T-bone by police. So that's where we're gonna cut it for this episode. In the next episode, we're gonna probably cut this car in half and we're also gonna get out all the Mustang body panels and start playing Legos, trying to assemble a Mustang Fastback. I don't know, maybe we could build it right here in all this wonderful space we have. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Peace!